Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by uh, expressing my gratitude to, 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 to the organizers for this very inspiring and, and neatly organized uh, program. Uh, and in particular to, to Thomas for, 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 for inviting me here and uh, letting me share with you uh, the, recent, the results of my uh, most recent research, which is on the higher supergeometry of the Super Sigma model. Uh, and <clears throat> so the goal that I set to myself and to, 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 to us here is to extend the, the GERP theoretic approach uh, quite successful in the bosonic setting, the setting of the bosonic two-dimensional two sigma model, to uh, super sigma models, whatever it means, I will explain what it means, with homogeneous spaces of Lie supergroups as uh, targets. Uh, and that in a manner with, uh, uh, consistent with the rigid and so global and local supersymmetries present in this setting. So uh, first I will, since I cannot assume an acquaintance of, of, on your part of the general logic that I want to follow here, I will quickly walk you through the predecessor, the bosonic, so non-graded predecessor of the class of supersymmetric field theories that I'm interested in and focus on, on the cohomological aspect thereof, higher cohomological, higher geometric aspect thereof, uh, which I will then try to transplant into the superworld. And then in the superworld, we'll go gently uh, assembling all the, all the pieces that are needed to even write down the, 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 the field theory I'm interested in, and then discuss its, its higher geometry. Okay, so what is there to learn from, uh, from the bosonic field theory? Uh, the way I want to learn it and invite you to, 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 to look at. So let me focus on a field theory uh, 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 with closed orientable two-dimensional space-times, uh, compact. Uh, these I will call the world sheets. Uh, and with the space of internal degrees of freedom, so the space of fields, given by a metric manifold, uh, MMG, which I call the target space, in what follows, and a three form, which I seem to be closed. And now the theory that I have in mind is that of mappings, so smooth maps from sigma to m, to, uh, with critical points or classical field configurations determined by the principle of least action for the following Dirac Feynman amplitude given, uh, written in terms of an action functional. By writing things in terms of, uh, by, by putting the Dirac Feynman amplitude here, I'm emphasizing the very issue that I'd be interested in, so the higher geometric, higher cohomological aspects of this here topological of S. Zumino term, which makes the theory that of minimal embeddings, minimal in the sense of the induced metric, but distorted by Lorentz-type forces sourced by, sourced by this, uh, by the, by this uh, three form. Well, these field theories find an application in many fields of uh, mathematical and theoretical physics, uh, to say that it finds an application in, in uh, Lagrangian uh, modeling of critical string theory might be a bit controversial nowadays. So let me just say that these are also, uh, I mean, as motivation, uh, but these are also uh, effective field theories of a sector of collective excitations of spin chains, as described by Haldane, Affleck, uh, Fratkin. So you see, the problem is that this field theory uh, is classically uh, reparametrization invariant, and we'd like to keep this property uh, in the quantum, uh, uh, in, uh, under quantization, as it organizes neatly the structure of the Hilbert space of the theory. And that implies constraints that we have to put on elements of the background, so G and H. And these constraints are such that sometimes, once we fix a metric manifold, we're no longer at liberty to choose H such, for example, that it's, it has a global smooth primitive. An example being, and a very important one, generating for rational conformal field theories, uh, uh, is that of a compact Lie group, G, as, as the target space, and then we take a Cartan killing metric on it, and then we actually have to take the Cartan three form, which happens to be the generator of a third cohomology group for, for G1 connected. And then we basically don't have a smooth, smooth, uh, smooth primitive for H, but quantum mechanics asks us to compare uh, trajectories, coordinate trajectories, which, whose, whose uh, topology may make it, may make it uh, impossible to find a global primitive uh, for H uh, to be pulled back to the world sheet uh, by, by the embedding map. And then we have to deal with that. So we have to make sense of this topological term, 
And the, uh, it turns out that the way to make sense of that is to, 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 to uh, recognize in the exponentiated term a chigger simons differential character, that name appeared before in Pavel's uh, uh, talk, uh, which is basically what it, what it is. It's, 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 uh, it's a, a billion group homomorphism from, from the group of, of two cycles in M into U1. That U1 will give us uh, the exponentiated action functional, uh, topological term, with a certain property that, that that I wrote down on the, on, the, on, the, on the slide. All right, so there is a practical solution to the question of, of, of constructing such a differential uh, character, and it goes back to the works of uh, uh, Alvarez and, and, and then Gavensky in the late 80s, and namely what you do is, uh, well, your field equations are uh, of second order, so your manifold, uh, your target space has to be C2. And for C2, uh, you have Weil de Ram, which means that there are good open covers. If there are good open covers, meaning uh, non-empty intersections uh, of, of their elements are contractible, and you can apply the Poincaré lemma, then you can basically trivialize H3 locally in, in chief, well, in Czech, uh, Czech de Ramco homology, which is what you do, which is what you would do uh, if you were to discuss the propagation of a massive point like massive charge probe in external gravitational electromagnetic fields. And there, the, the higher geometry that you would obtain uh, uh, would be that of a, of, a, of a line bundle over the target space. Here, it's something well, even higher, so to say. But anyway, this is how it is represented by those... This is how it is represented by those uh, uh, sheaf cohomological data. And now we can simply write down a formula for the, for, the, uh, for the topological term of the action functional, which is independent of the choices made, as long as the, the UN-valued locally smooth maps, GIJK, uh, form a, two, uh, a Czech 2 cycle with values in one, which secretly encodes, just as it would in the point-like particle case, uh, uh, an integrality condition on the periods of H3. Okay, there is then the higher geometry behind the scene, and I have written it, I will refer to such objects as Murray diagrams in what follows, because indeed the geometrization was proposed by Murray in 94, and then elaborated by Murray and his student Stevenson in 99. So, we, what we have, what we start with is a, is, Reining in the cursor. Oh boy. Uh, maybe it's, I shouldn't be so, ah, I shouldn't be so polite. It's so, okay, good. So we have this manifold M on which there is a three form, and we erect a, a, a subjective submersion, the, the Stichwort subjective submersions. That will be omnipresent. So we erect a subjective submersion over M on which there is supposed to be, thank you. That's friends. So there is this, well, whatever. Uh, there is this subjective submersion uh, on which we uh, uh, ask to, uh, a two-form to exist, which trivializes the pullback of H3. And this is, by the way, what we call the trivial gerb, the trivial one gerb. And then we form uh, consecutive uh, uh, products of the subjective submersion fibered over, over M as the base. And over these, we erect, well, first a line bun uh, principal CX bundle with a principal connection whose curvature is fixed by the two pullbacks of B2. And we sort of go on. We also single out a, a principal bundle, one is uh, uh, sorry, isomorphism, which preserves the connection and which satisfies a certain associativity property over Y4. So it's a groupoid structure on, uh, on, on fibers. And then we can give a sort of index-free interpretation to that exponentiated topological uh, term. Basically, if you pull back by X the gerb to sigma, there it's necessarily a flat gerb, because there are no three forms on a two-manifold. Uh, and the group, uh, the abelian group of uh, flat gerbs over sigma is canonically isomorphic going via uh, the second Czech cohomology with values in U1 for sigma. Uh, it's canonically isomorphic with U1, and that number you, is, you, you, you call uh, the value of the exponentiated topological term. And that's, by the way, the sort of surface holonomy. Okay, so this story generalizes to uh, higher dimensions of, of the world volumes and higher Maxwell-type fields, but I will not go there. Uh, in case you still haven't figured out what a gerb is, here's the, the, the basically the origin of the species. So this is a painting by Henri Matisse uh, from 1953. 50, he can be called the father of the gerb. Then Giraud, in his seminal uh, work on dynamical systems, took up the idea. 
and, and coined it to a mathematical object, which, uh, well, proved to be quite, quite natural and, and, and uh, find fruitful applications in the theory of two-dimensional sigma models. Okay, and La Gerbe uh, is a spray sheaf, reef, bouquet, all these names having been taken already, uh, we stay with the gerb. <coughs> okay. Sorry, sorry so, to interrupt you. Sure. There was just a question in the chat which I, which I was read out. Yeah. Uh, the question is, what is YM? What is what? Y YM. Why? It's a subjective submersion, and it always exists. Okay. Any such subjective submersion that does the job is fine, and it always exists. That's it. I said all that was needed. Okay. Was a su subjective submersion. Okay, the answer is okay in the chat. Good. Yeah, yeah, it's very okay. Good. So, uh, so then what do we get from actually being rigorous about the topological term? Well, we get a, a, a prequantization scheme for the, for the theory because it just so happens that there is a cohomology map from the cohomology, whatever it is, is Deling, Bailingson, real, uh, take P equal to one, and then CPM is the loop space over, over M which is the configuration space of the two-dimensional sigma model. So there's a cohomology map from the deligne uh, bailingson cohomology that uh, captures the equivalence classes of, of local sheaf theoretic data of, of the GERP into uh, the corresponding cohomology that, uh, that enumerates isomorphism classes of uh, principal CX bundles over the configuration space of the sigma model. And uh, so, this maps gives you the so-called transgression bundle, which after some minor correction by a trivial uh, principal CX bundle over the, over the uh, space of states of your sigma model, uh, gives you a principal CX bundle over that phase space of the sigma model with connection whose curvature happens to be the presymplectic form of the sigma model as derived from the Lagrangian um, in the spirit of this first order formalism of Tulchiev, Kiyovsky, Gavensky uh, and the Sturbas. And so, in the, by, the end of the long, by the end of the long day, we, we have a way to uh, sort of classify, uh, well, higher geometrize and classify uh, in equivalent two-dimensional sigma models. Then it turns out, you see, that the gerbs are zero cells in a certain weak higher category, and the content of the higher category, the one cells, the two cells, and so on, happens to be exactly what is needed to give a meaning to a multi-phase theory like that, where we have phases separated by co-dimension one uh, interfaces, defects. This is the defect field theory of Fröhlich, Runkel, uh, Fuchs, and, and Schweig, and others, and uh, Kackwil. Uh, so, uh, so we have phases sitting on, on, uh, on uh, patches of the world sheet, separated by intersection defects. The interse uh, uh, sorry, separa separated by defects. These defects intersect, and you, all, you need geometric, high geometric data to pull back to the, to the phases these are the gerbs, then interfaces, these are the so-called gerb bimodules, and then intersections of higher and higher order. And that's precisely, and no more, that the higher category gives you. Yep. Sorry? Does this work in more than two dimensions? Uh, well, it's a general rule. So the way we, we derived it with Ingo, uh, how you need the bimodules, well, that was actually derived by Fuchs and, 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 and collaborators, but, uh, but how you need the two isomorphism of the jerk uh, by category for the, for the intersections in the two-dimensional uh, setting, it's completely, uh, it's algorithmic almost. I mean, there is, there is no room for anything else in higher dimensions. Basically, you would have, you would have say, two-dimensional faces in Chen Simons, uh, to which you you would pull uh, two gerb by modules, and then they would intersect along lines uh, for which you would have uh, secondary isomorphisms. I don't, I don't want to go into the, the, the terminology too much, but, but the general idea is the same always. You need... So there's, for example, a class of four-dimensional... Well, there is no class of examples. Oh. <laughs> what I'm saying is that how you, what you need for those structures is precisely what sits in this higher category. Thanks. Okay. And so, um, so, uh, so you see, there is, a, there is a correspondence between defects 
and uh, well, very special ones, topological ones, and um, uh, field theory dualities. Uh, and among those dualities, we find self-dualities of a field theory, so it's, uh, it's symmetries, basically. And I want to focus on configurational symmetries. Uh, and you see, when lifting the symmetries to the higher geometry that I'm, uh, that I'm, that I'm describing right now, we uh, obtain a subcategory of symmetries which I would call quantizable or prequantizable, strictly speaking, because it's a prequantum bundle that the GERP gives us, we still have to choose a polarization. Okay, so what are these? Well, these come from lifting, these come from actions of, of subgroups of the isometry group of the target space, uh, which have a very special property, namely they're generalized Hamiltonian for, for H2, meaning if I take a, if I take a fundamental vector field uh, induced by the action of the group, and I contract it with H, H now I restored P. Uh, so it's not just P equal to 1, but you can always think of P equal to 1 <coughs> as a model example. So uh, if I contract the, the, the fundamental vector field with H, it's supposed to be exact. Uh, this is what I need for the symmetry to be the symmetry of the, 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 two di the, the P dimensional, P plus 1 dimensional sigma model. Uh, and so altogether, you see, what I get is a pair, a section of the tangent bundle over M, and a section over, uh, of the pth exterior power of the cotangent bundle, so a, a section of a generalized tangent bundle of type 1P, Hitchens type, right? And on these, we have a natural bracket, namely uh, what I at some point called the twisted Vinogradov bracket. Well, for P equal to 1, it's just a Courant bracket, uh, twisted a la Chevera and, and Weinstein, by Weinstein uh, by, uh, by uh, H3, and it happens to close on these symmetric sections. It will recur. It's a rifle, it's a Chekhov's rifle that will fire later on. So I'm not putting this structure here for nothing. Okay, so what can we do with these symmetries? Well, we can do two things. First off, First of all, we can simply consider them as global symmetries of a theory, which set in correspondence uh, field, in equivalent field configurations. The correspondence is, is that basically the action functional takes the same value on these. And the way we higher geometrize them is, uh, so make them prequantizable, is associate with them uh, families, indexed by the, 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 the symmetry group acting, families of uh, GERP isomorphisms, okay? One isomorphisms. Gerbs are, uh, so isomorphisms are described by uh, themselves by, uh, in the lowest case, p equal to one, by bundles, so then there are secondary isomor secondary morphisms in this by category, but let me no, not go there. Just, I'm just saying that the way you high geometrize global symmetries is by lifting them to uh, one isomorphisms of the gerb that you associate with the sigma model. <coughs> well, as I said, that, that's, a, that's a Murray diagram for this, for this symmetry. So basically we take, what, well, maybe I should explain it at least once. So what we take is a subjective submersion of the gerb to the left, the pullback by the group action, the subjective submersion of the gerb to the right. I take a fiber product over M and, and request that there be a principal CX bundle with connection over this guy with the curvature of the connection fixed by the difference of the two curvings, these are called curvings for the gerb, and then some extra structure. But anyway, this is a, a, a bundle that I need. Another thing that we may do upon identifying global symmetries, and this is about model building, so mapping the moduli space of field theories here, uh, is gauging them. So, <laughs> gauging basically means that we want to think of certain uh, field configurations as actually equivalent, or, uh, but being described in different ways. Uh, and so, gauging means that we secretly want to pass from the target space M, as the, the space of internal degrees of freedom, to the, to, to the target space M mod G sigma, to the orbit space. The problem being that this orbit space may fall out of the smooth category, and then we should think of gauging as modeling a theory on the orbit space by a theory with the target space M. Okay, so uh, there is a principle that organizes this gauging. This is the principle of descent, worked out by Gavensky, Waldorf, and myself in 2010. And it basically states that the, this higher category of, of uh, uh, gerbs on the orbit space 
if the orbit space is actually a quotient manifold, for which I assume that the action is free and proper, for example, then this category is equivalent to the category of those gerbs on M, which carry an extra structure, and this is, not surprisingly, an equivariant structure, but not any equivariant structure, but the so-called flat equivariant or descendable equivariant structure. Now, I don't want to bore you with the details here. Let me just say that an equivariant structure is a collection of those, of, well, it's a zero cell on M, then a one cell, so one isomorphism on the arrow manifold of the action groupoid here, and then a, a secondary isomorphism on then we sort of move along the nerve of the action groupoid, and we have a, sec a, a two cell of uh, G cross G cross M, and so on, until we find a P plus one uh, isomorphism. The point being that the, that the one isomorphism with, with, with which we start gives us rho lambda, which we want to play with. And so if this, if this, if this correction is flat, if this, if this correction uh, vanishes, <coughs> then we have descent which will happen later on in the supergeometric context. But if it doesn't, and generically it doesn't, so we have a gerb, and it has, if we are dealing with a global symmetry that we want to gauge, it just has some row, and you have to live with it. Still, you can gauge if, uh, you can gauge if the following conditions are satisfied. Well, first of all, you have to kill the so-called small gauge anomaly, which, uh, well, the way, you, the way you proceed is basically minimally couple uh, a, principal, um, a principal connection on a principal uh, G sigma bundle over the world sheet. And you have to take uh, representatives of all ISO classes, because these secretly correspond to different twisted sectors of the, of the theory. Uh, and then uh, killing the small gauge anomaly means, can be phrased algebraically as demanding that those sections of the generalized tangent bundle, uh, th th their functional linear span should not only close uh, uh, under, the, under this twisted Vinogradov bracket, but it should actu actually define a Lie algebroid. And then if it defines a Lie algebroid, it's not any Lie algebroid, but it's the, the tangent Lie algebroid of the action groupoid that we came across uh, beforehand. And then this is the small gauge anomaly, which basically means that if you couple minimally A, uh, you get a theory which is invariant under gauge transformations from the connected component of, of the identity. But then you have to take care of the large gauge transformations, and this is where the equivariant structure kicks in. If you have it, you can gauge it. If you, if you don't, you cannot. All right? And now there's a beautiful physical way to understand uh, uh, an equivariant structure. Basically, it's what gives us data for uh, uh, Dixon, Waffa, or Bifold world sheet, uh, uh, Dixon, Waffa, <laughs> Dixon, Waffa, Witten, world sheet or Bifold of the theory on M as modeling a theory on M mod G sigma on the orbit space. Okay. So, of course, this gives us this higher geometric description of gaugeable symmetries, gives us cohomological means to classify in equivalent gaugings, to classify obstructions against gauging. Uh, it gives us a nice tool to, 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 to map the moduli space of theories by passing from one theory to another, which is obtained by gauging in this way from a vesumino witten model or vesumino witten models. You believe to, to, to be able to come to all rational conformal field theories through tensoring and gauging, strictly speaking. And then, actually, I should point out that it, it also it also gives it's, it's, this gauging is instrumental in understanding T-duality because you're basically gauging one of the torus actions in T-duality. Okay, so what do we... Yeah, yeah? On the previous slide, could you give a very brief answer to the question, what is your best reason to believe that you get all RCFTs this way? No, 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 it's, well, it's not a question. It's, sort of, it's not, it's not the, 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 the moment to, to ask that question. It's a, it's a, I think it's a folklore belief that you can get all, uh, going back to Gepner, that you can, uh, you can get all uh, rational conformal field theories by tensoring gauged uh, Vesumino Witten models. And I, I have nothing to add to that folklore okay, statement. Thanks. Okay, so what you learn from, uh, from, from this whole story, higher geometry of the sigma model, is this. Well, first, if it matters, if, if you want to make a meaningful statement in this field theory, you'd better be able to <clears throat> higher geometrize it, lift it to the gerb. And in particular, if you want to make a statement about global symmetries, 
it should correspond to those families of one isomorphisms of the gerb indexed by the group acting, by the symmetry group. And if it's a local configurational symmetry, because there are also non-configurational symmetries that like reparameterization invariance, right? Uh, then it is about equivariance of the gerb. Well, the, 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 the higher dogmatics continues, but let me not go in there. Let me instead put some spin on it. So what we want to describe now with this knowledge in the back of our heads, respective heads, uh, is a transplantation of this whole business to the situation in which the space of fields, so the argument of a Dirac Feynman amplitude, is a mapping space, whatever it is, I'll say what it is, but naively we would just say, we have a mapping space of omega p, which we keep as before, so a closed, compact, p plus one dimensional manifold, into a super manifold, uh, and then we request this supermanifold to be endowed with an action of a Lie supergroup, of which we shall think as the supersymmetry Lie supergroup. Now, the physical motivation for that, well, I mean, there is, of course, pure curiosity that can drive in that direction, but the physical motivation, at least for me, is, is, is trying to, to sort of ha have a better understanding of the extremely robust, it seems, but uh, sort of rigorously still elusive ADS-CFT correspondence, which happens to take as its, as, its, as its point of departure sigma models of that type uh, with very special supermanifolds as supertargets, namely homogeneous spaces of Lie supergroups that we, to which we shall come next. Okay, so maybe let me, let me skip it, just argue in favor of a certain choice of this smapping space or mapping space. Well, the first thing that you would think of would, uh, would be, well, a manifold is also a supermanifold. So omega p is a supermanifold, m is a supermanifold. Previously, we just take c infinity, well, we just take, took diffeomorphism, uh, uh, smooth maps from omega p into m. Let's just take uh, supermanifold morphisms. But you see, supermanifold morphisms are, uh, have a sheaf component which, is a, which, which has to be a, a homomorphism of uh, the supercommutative superalgebras uh, uh, that, are, mm, that are attached to opens in, in a topological base, this being the definition of a supermanifold, locally modeled on, on a superspace, which is a supermanifold of this sort. And so, when you do it naively, you will never probe the oddity in M because of the non-oddity of omega p. By just looking at a local coordinate uh, description of, of a supermanifold morphism, in a situation where omega p has no theta one, so no odd coordinates on it, you will see that you, you're just getting functions into the so-called body of M. And this is not something you're interested in. So you have to refine the definition, well, you have to get the definition right. And that was gotten right by Fried in 1995. 1995. So he proposed that we think of omega p, uh, comma m as the inner home functor from uh, omega p into m, which basically means that you have to augment omega p with some odd fuzz, so, uh, so that you probe the oddity in m. So basically, you take this to be a functor, the, you, you take omega pm to, to the smapping space to be this functor to be evaluated to be evaluated on these odd hyperplanes. So then, whatever field theory I, I choose to define in what follows will be basically a family of field theories, standard field theories, or actually super field theories, uh, labeled by this n, <clears throat> but packaged nicely. Okay, so. Uh, let me now, so we have dealt preliminarily with the supergeometry that we want to play with, but now we want to put supersymmetry in, the, in, in this setting. So supersymmetry, as I said, will be modeled by Lie supergroup actions. So let us deal with these. I could be just mean and say that Lie supergroups are group objects in the category of supermanifolds, which means that you uh, take the axioms defining a group, uh, the, the diagrams, and you put them in the category of supermanifolds. So the nodes are, 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 uh, are supermanifolds. The category of supermanifolds admits uh, products, so we're good. For our intents and purposes, it also admits uh, uh, fibered products, which is important, of course, for the GERP construction. Uh, and the arrows on those diagrams will now be supermanifold morphisms. And that's it. 
except that it's, it gets you nowhere uh, in, 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 in physical applications. But still, before we get there, let us, let it, let us make it get us uh, somewhere. <laughs> Namely, uh, by defining a Lie supergroup thus, we have access to standard definition of left invariant vector fields, so very special sections of the of the sheaf of uh, superderivations of the structure sheaf of, or, 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 on, on G, and there are duals, uh, uh, that is, left invariant one forms and likewise right invariant forms. And now we can say what an action of a Lie supergroup is. It's what an action is just in the category of supermanifolds. So you write down all the diagrams and put them in the category of, of supermanifolds. The important thing to note is that if you have an action of a Lie supergroup, you automatically get an action of the body group and this is a bona fide action, which you can write with, with coordinates, with points, because, uh, because this, uh, the, the underlying body uh, of the supermanifold G has points, unlike G. I mean, it has S points, but that's slightly um, different. So using the so-called topological points in uh, G, you can actually use lambda to induce a bona fide action of the, of the bodily group. And now it's gone. Uh, I need help, is it? No, it's not, it's not just, it's gone here, but never mind. Okay, so as I said, this is all very fine, except that it doesn't get you anywhere near the physical applications, because so the way the physicists see supersymmetry, typically, is they have a few theoretic realization of a, of a supersymmetry algebra. Uh, which means they describe sort of local transformations that mix fermionic and bosonic degrees of freedom, find uh, Poisson brackets somehow, Poisson brackets uh, uh, of nutter currents of this symmetry, and lo and behold, there is some kind of superalgebra structure on it. So luckily, we have Costin, uh, who back in 1977, cooked up uh, an alternative definition of the Lie supergroup, which is uh, what the equivalence between the two categories is. So on the one hand, we have the category of Lie supergroups, so group objects in the category of supermanifolds with the corresponding morphisms, uh, homomorphisms. And on the other hand, <coughs> we have the category of superharish chandra pairs. And that's precisely the physical context. Because a superharish chandra pair is a Lie group together with a Lie superalgebra so a Z2-graded vector space with a bracket that sort of uh, modulo 2 respects the grading. Uh, now, the even part of this Lie superalgebra is chosen to be the tangent Lie uh, algebra of the, of the body Lie group. Uh, and then, on the whole Lie superalgebra, the, the body Lie group acts, or is, is realized, in a way that extends the standard adjoint a realization of, the, of, the, of a Lie group on its tangent Lie algebra. Well, we have the notion of morphisms here, and then the point is to understand that this, this equivalence of categories, at least in one direction, is all about sort of adapting coordinates on the group. Because what Costin is telling us is to take as the structure sheaf of the supermanifold that you want to produce from this superharish chandra pair, the, the set of homomorphisms in the category of uh, modules of the universal enveloping algebra of the even part between the universal enveloping algebra of the Lie superalgebra into the space of smooth functions on the body group. So if you look at, the, there are, so if you study this, the structure of this Hopf's superalgebra, by the way, which is necessary to, to, to introduce mu, inverse, and, 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 the, and the unit, then you realize that this is actually sort of, these are the, the, the standard coordinates on the, on the group. So you have the odd coordinates as duals of, of the guys in here, and then the standard functions on the bodily group. So it's just an adaptation of a coordinate system, so to say. Okay. <clears throat> so an example of a Lie supergroup that admits both descriptions, a supermanifold description and a superharish chandra pair description, is the super Minkowski. So what you have is the supermanifold here with, uh, with uh, I'm just giving sheaf, uh, uh, sheaf components of the multiplication map and the inverse map. And since you, see, since you have global generators of the structure sheaf in super Minkowski, then you can actually go to the S-point picture and just write human, uh, human formulae for, for the binary operation, which look very familiar from, from probably from supersymmetry field theory courses. Uh, 
And then you can also describe this object as a super Harish Chandra pair. So you take Minkowski as the, 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 the Lie group as the, as, the, as the body group, uh, as the body, sorry. And then you, you take the standard uh, Lie super algebra of super translations, which is what you would in any physics course call the supersymmetry, so to say. So supercharges anti commute to translations. This is the signal of, of, of super, super symmetry that is, that is typically taken a long way in, 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 in conclusions. Okay, let me skip another example, though it's might be important because, because that's, kind of, that's, the, that's the Lee super, super group uh, relevant to the construction of the Matsayev Taitlin model of super string on, su on ADS5 crosses 5 superized. The only difference here is that you basically you see the super, the anti-commutator of supercharges here uh, gets, uh, receives, so it's, it's translations and rotations, and you have curvature here, basically, in this model. So translations no longer commute. But, okay, well, and to the best of my knowledge, this doesn't admit a hands-on description into, uh, as a supermanifold, uh, as, uh, as with most super targets uh, in this field of uh, mathematical physics. Okay, so now you may slowly get in the direction of a super sigma model. So I'll now say what a, uh, what a Nambugoto super background is. So we have a super manifold on which a Lie supergroup acts, uh, and in such a way that the two tensors that come, uh, come uh, along, namely a kind of a metric, it's degenerate in the odd directions, but still, a metric on M and, uh, and a Durham co-cycle are invariant under this action. That's the starting point. Now we'll zoom in on specific supermanifolds. Namely, it is customary in, in, in this, this domain of, of, of uh, mathematical physics to look at full uh, uh, orbits of the supersymmetry group. So a full orbit is equivalently isomorphic with a homogeneous space. And that's what I want to talk about next. Uh, and in fact, I'll need a very sort of hands-on description of these guys, which was not uh, available back in the times of Costin and Kossul, uh, even though they actually proposed to, 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 to talk about homogeneous spaces of Lee, Lee supergroups already back in 1977. The problem is that they used this super Harish Chandra uh, language, and it made things kind of obscure. Uh, simple notions such as a, such as a, a homogeneous space of a Lee supergroup looked uh, preposterously obscure, n needlessly so, I would say, because at the time when Fiorezi, Carmeli, Fiorezi, and Vara Darajan came, came, came over and looked at those homogeneous spaces, it turned out that the, the situation is, resembles the non-graded one fully, in that there is a unique structure of a supermanifold on uh, G mod H, which is uh, sort of, it's, it's, a, it's a sheaf over, uh, of, of super algebras, the structure sheaf over a body which is just the, 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 the homogeneous space of the respective bodies, well, very natural. The sheaf is something you would expect it to be, so you just take over open super domains in G mod H, you take, uh, well, you, you take functions on their pre-images under the projection, canonical projection, that consists of functions that are right invariant under, under the group you're, you're, you're projecting out. That's what you would think of in the first place. Now, the point is that there is a unique such structure for which p, uh, sorry, pi is, uh, is a subjective submersion, and uh, along which the, the standard left, left regular action of the Lie supergroup on itself descends to the homogeneous space. But when you read the paper by Varadarajan and uh, Fiorezi uh, at all, you'll actually find out that the way they're proving the existence of this uh, uh, supermanifold structure is secretly constructing local trivializations of what we're right to call a principal H bundle, uh, G over G mod H, which is again uh, in conformity with the non-graded um, non uh, intuition. Okay, so now, we have set up the scene for the geometry of the sigma model, but we want dynamics, we want derivatives. So we need extra constraints to be imposed on, on the homogeneous space in order to be able to construct a, a, a model of dynamical fields on G mod H. And those extra, uh, extra uh, assumptions that we have to impose here have to do with the tangent uh, calculus, 
uh, on, on G. Namely, we ask that the decomposition of the Lie superalgebra of the, of the supersymmetry Lie group uh, induced by H, so into H and the direct sum component, is reductive, which means that T is a H add module. That's what it is. Why is that important? Well, because following with uh, first Weinberg, uh, Strathdee, Salam, uh, Callan, then Isham and others, we'd like to induce uh, a field theory on G mod H from tensorial objects automatically left invariant, so supersymmetric, that live on G. And the way we do it is if we look at the G valued left invariant Maurer Cartan uh, one form on G, it splits with respect to this splitting into the part which is a connection, a principal H connection on this bundle that I described, G over G mod H, and, and a bunch of, well, row, which means add, adjoint tensors of, of, uh, of, of H. Why is that important? Well, you see, because if I now uh, take tensor products of these one forms along T, uh, and take us as uh, coefficients of a linear combination, uh, add H invariant tensors, then I have an object which by definition is left invariant, supersymmetry invariant, which is uh, by construction, I'm just using the mu's, so it's H horizontal, and I just put it such that it's also H invariant, so it's H basic, so it descends. Okay, so now what I want to do, um, we're zooming in here, what I want to do is, I now want to, con I, wa I want the physics to play on the, on the, so I want to realize G mod H by those local trivializing sections of the bundle G over G mod H, and then on these, I want to take those very specific tensors, a metric, namely, and a P plus one, P plus two co-cycle, the RAM co-cycle, and th these are the ingredients of my field theory. <clears throat> okay, so there are examples of such structures like Minkowski. On Minkowski, you have a metric. Uh, you just take the Minkowski metric and, 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 and put it on the, on the Lie superalgebra, but it's degenerate in the, in the odd directions. And you have a bunch of, of, of uh, P plus two co-cycles, which are relevant to the super sigma models I want to discuss. Likewise, on other homogeneous spaces, but let me not sort of not go there. Now the super sigma model. Whoa. Finally. So what is it? It's we take a closed and orientable manifold, omega P, uh, of dimension P plus one, a Lie supergroup, supersymmetry group, and it well, a closed subgroup of its body, then by Cartan it's, it's, it's a Lie subgroup, uh, such that the corresponding pair G, H is reductive, that's for dynamics. Assume given a pair of tensors, descendable tensors, on G, and then the Green-Schwartz super sigma model in the Nambugota formulation is a theory of smappings, we know what these are, those functorial smappings, uh, determined by the following action, by the principle of least action for the following action functional. Boring, boring, because it's just sort of minimal sembeddings, however, you, this is silly, but basically it's what it is. It's minimal sembeddings uh, distorted by uh, Lorentz type, whatever, forces. Except that <coughs> nice things are beginning to happen because, well, first of all, you realize that what these objects are, are those minimal hypersurfaces in, in the supermanifold, morally. Uh, and once you choose one such hypersurface, so a vacuum, classical vacuum of the theory, a spontaneous breakdown of symmetry occurs. So since we're sitting on G, we have this invisible gauge group H. Everything has to be H equivariant. So H gets reduced to H vac because we have a, a, so a subgroup of H which preserves the vacuum, point one. Point two, you see, as we, as we localize the vacuum in, 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 in uh, G, modeling G mod H, then some, of, some translations locally are no longer symmetries of the vacuum. They, got, they get uh, broken. And we have this mechanism of transmission of translational sym symmetry to the odd sector. So we need a mechanism that freezes out some of the fermions, 
in the vacuum. And this puts us in the context of this uh, enigmatic Kappa symmetry of De Ascaraga, Lukierski, and Siegel, which I'm not defining here because I want to define it properly later on by passing to a dual super sigma model. But anyway, it's, uh, I, still re I read this statement from, the, from NLAB just today, and it still says, a hidden symmetry with no evident geometric interpretation. We'll try to uh, break the spell here. Okay, so there are lots of models uh, like that, super sigma models with this general, that fit into this general framework. And now, what, is the, what are the empirical facts that we can, we can derive from looking at those super sigma models? Concrete super sigma models. It's nothing generic, it's just we're looking at specific sigma models. ADS5 crosses 5 super i's. ADS2 crosses 2 Zhu. Uh, ADS3 crosses 3 Park and Ray. Uh, ADS5 crosses 5 is Metsayev and Saitlin. Super Minkowski by Green, Schwartz, Brink and others. <clears throat> what do we see? We see that two, thi two scenarios may, may uh, unfold. In one, the P plus 2 co-cycle, uh, let, let me just call it chi because it's terrible to say P plus 2 all the time. So chi will typically be trivial in the Ram cohomology, but it will be non-trivial in the cartan eilenberg cohomology. So the supersymmetry is supersymmetrically refined the Ram cohomology. And that, after all, is the cohomology we have to deal with. And the reason why this is altogether possible is that cartan eilenberg no longer replies because uh, supersymmetry groups are inherently non-compact. So the two cohomologies are not, uh, are not uh, uh, the invariant and the, 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 the standard DRAM are not uh, a priori equivalent, right? Uh, now for superstrings on, on those curved models, we see that although uh, the, the co-cycles proposed by Metsayev, Seitlin, Parkre and, and uh, Roux are, are, are uh, trivial, in the cartan eilenberg cohomology, but the problem is that the primitives do not asymptote to the super Minkowskian counterparts, and the models are constructed on the basis of the asymptotic correspondence with the Green-Schwartz models on super Minkowski. So something's wrong. Okay. So, uh, well, I said what the problems are, sort of never mind the, 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 the Inonu Vigna problem, but the, the first thing is that, well, we are in, a, in the same situation as in the ungraded uh, geometric uh, setting, because we have, we have to choose the cartan eilenberg cohomology rather than the RAM as, uh, as, as, as the thing we look at. And if we look at this uh, cohomology, then the forms are closed, but not exact. So we like to geometrize them. Except that what exactly does it mean to geometrize the discrepancy between the RAM and supersymmetric the RAM? It seems uh, nonsensical until you look at a, at a, at a paper from the mid-80s by Rabin and Crane. So Rabin had worked with Kosteletsky on uh, supersymmetric lattice gauge field theories. And there they came across a discrete subgroup of the, of the super Minkowski uh, Lee supergroup, uh, which they found interesting. Uh, the, 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 the story of this, of this discrete subgroup, this is a subgroup generated by integral uh, uh, odd translations uh, in a representation, in a Majorana representation of the Minkowski, uh, Minkowski and Clifford algebra with integer um, coefficients of the, of the gamma matrices, basically. It's very technical, but the point is that it, it has a very specific description. And now the story of this sub supergroup is this. If you look at forms on Minkowski, which are inv left invariant under this, under this uh, group, then these are left invariant, super Minkowski left invariant forms. You drop none, and it's only these guys. Which means, and that's the proposal of Rabin and Crane, that if you were to think of the sigma model as secretly describing a, a field theory on an orbifold of the original super manifold, by a discrete subgroup of the supersymmetry group with the property that in the orbifold, the new homology cycles that you get are dual to precisely those, those uh, cohomology co-cycles on the big manifold uh, that, uh, that you find that are Durham trivial, but cartan eilenberg non-trivial. Then, then, uh, you should, 
well, so first of all, this, this orbifold is a geometrization of the discrepancy between Cartan, Ellenberg, and Deram, and it motivates us to actually do, the Murray, do Murray's job. So higher geometrize the co-cycles, which we shall do, uh, which we shall do next. Now, actually, these orbifolds were constructed in a hands-on manner by Rabbit and Crane. These are just, and th the point to note is that they have compact, some compact, uh, some compact uh, even directions, which is not terribly um, exciting, but they also have compact odd directions. What does it mean? We want to pass to the, to the orbifold. In field theory, passing to the orbifold is the same as gauging. But gauging means that on top of considering what is gauging, well, uh, first of all, you bin together field configurations which are related by global group action of the group that you're gauging. Second of all, you have to introduce new field configurations, the twisted sector, which are patchwise smooth, so they, they're not good in the mother theory, but when you pass to the quotient, they become smooth because the jumps in those patchwise uh, smooth configurations are controlled by the action of the group that you're gauging. That's the twisted sector. That's the equivariant structure, by the way. So, but what does it mean? So, how are we to make sense of this proposal by Rabin and Crane? Well, we should look uh, at, at uh, um, uh, Poisson Lie algebra of, of supersymmetry, of, of nutter charges of supersymmetry in the sigma model, and just allow for monodromies of the odd coordinates. Well, odd and even, but. And what we find are wrapping anomalies. And it just so happens. By the way, omega sigma is, de is derived in the same uh, first order formalism by Tulci of uh, Gavensky and, 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 uh, and others. Uh, and so we find wrapping anomalies, and it just so happens, that it's an empirical fact, that some of those wrapping anomalies actually describe uh, trivializations of some non-trivial two co-cycles in Lee, algebra, Lee super algebra cohomology. So from that, you, 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 you derive motiva the following motivation. What we should do is, is we should look at Lee super algebra extensions, supercentral extensions of the original supersymmetry algebra, which, when integrated, if possible, would give us Lie supergroup extensions, and these Lie supergroup extensions would give us the, the subjective submersions that we would put in Murray's diagrams. Uh, okay, so there are a bunch of theorems that we may find useful along the way. So the first thing is just to, to super geometrize uh, the way I want to do it, is well, first, we're dealing, we, so what we have in our super sigma model is a Duram co-cycle. Well, a Duram co-cycle can be thought of as a chevalet eilenberg co-cycle on the Lie super algebra. And then there is a correspondence between classes of two co-cycles with values in uh, super vector spaces, that's here, and equivalence classes of supercentral extensions of a Lie super algebra by it. This is a classic result from Lie algebra theory and it carries over to the, to the supersetting. Well, there are also some theorems that you may look at uh, when trying to integrate those Lie super algebra extensions to Lie supergroup extensions. Okay, so now is the idea of higher supergeometrization of the super sigma model. Let me, let me unwind it. So it's inspired by, uh, by work on extended super space times of Das, De Ascaraga and, and, and others. So what we should do is we want to, we, we know how to, uh, how to um, do extensions for two co-cycles. Uh, so we should look at the linear span of two co-cycles obtained from the, the RAM P plus two co-cycle by contraction with left invariant vector fields and try to find and it just so happens that we can always do that in known examples, try to find, for the, for a, try to find a non-trivial two-co cycle, which will, through the theorem from the previous slide, give, us, give, give rise to a Lie superalgebra extension, supercentral extension, of the original supersymmetry Lie algebra, which, upon integration, and again, it just so happens that these extensions, the, no, the, 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 the relevant ones, integrate, will integrate to a Lie supergroup extension. What's the property of this Lie supergroup extension? Well, if you pull back the original P plus 2 cocycle, chi, to the extended supergroup, it will partially trivialize. And then you turn the crank again until you reach 
uh, 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 an extension, no longer central extension, but an extension of the original Lee supersymmetry uh, super supergroup on which the P plus 2 co-cycle trivializes in Cartan Heilenberg. And you have geometrized the thing because now you have a subjective submersion over the space on which your sigma model lives or is modeled because it lives on G mod H and a primitive in the cohomology that you need to consider of the of chi of the p plus two cocycle, well then you have to check that it descends to 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 the quotient, but that's typically if you sort of proceed, and then this would be the starting point of gerbification because you have a you have the surjective submersion and a primitive for h, so then you just play along as Murray and Stevenson tell you, and and just use the same idea, find two cocycles. Uh, integrate, uh, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, until, terrain ahead, until you, uh, until you, you, you trivialize in cartan eilenberg homology of the Lee supergroup extension. Well, I applied this idea in the context of super Minkowski and was able to construct super zero, super one, and super two gerbs, so the, the, the super gerbs for the, for, the, for the sparticle, for the super string, and for the, for the M theory membrane, whatever it is, uh, and, and then got impatient a little bit because that, that, that of course, it gets a bit tedious, uh, but then abstracted from it the, the concept of a cartan eilenberg p gerb of course, an H equivariant one, that's what we need uh, in, in the end, but a, a, a Cartan Eilenberg P-gerb, which morally is a P-gerb, so think of, the, of, of a Murray diagram, but in the category of Lee supergroups. What it means more concretely is uh, that, so let's look at a one gerb, super one gerb, is that we have this Murray diagram, and now all arrows are group, super, Lee supergroup extensions. All forms are left invariant with respect to the corresponding group. And if I have uh, CX bundle uh, isomorphisms, I request them to be Lee supergroup isomorphisms. Okay, good. So that's the idea of higher geometry. So then I could apply this method in the context of. Uh, in, in for the, to the model, to Zhu's model of, uh, of a sparticle uh, on ADS2 cross S2 uh, superized, and it works. <coughs> now, for, for Metsayev and Saitlin, I don't have to apply anything because, as I told you, uh, the, the co cycles are trivial in, uh, have trivial classes in, in the Cartan Eilenberg cohomology. But then we, the, the, the problem is that the, the corresponding trivial gerbs do not asymptote to Minkowskian gerbs. So this suggests that something might be wrong with the Metsayev Saitlin model or Park Ray, for that matter, but I won't go in there. So now we have, we have like, so we have discussed the supergeometry, but all along it has been a supergeometry with supersymmetry. So we have hired the supergeometric side. What about hiring the, the supersymmetry? So what about an emanation or realization, higher geometric realization of supersymmetry? Well, as I previously pointed out, there are several layers here. So first there is global supersymmetry, but that's just built in because we're, we're safely set in the Lee supergroup category. So global supersymmetry is trivial here. We have this hidden gauge symmetry, which we know how to implement because that's, that's just in the world of gerbs, H equivariant structure. And in fact, if we do the extensions in a, in a wise way, so if the extensions are also extensions in the category of A, H modules, then it's also automatic, this H equivariant structure. But we are left with one last thing to describe, namely the spontaneous breakdown of supersymmetry. The problem, so I, I just suggested that there is some kind, of local, some kind of local supersymmetry, this kappa symmetry, that does the job, that, dis, that freezes out the, the unwanted uh, fermionic degrees of freedom. The problem with this supersymmetry, though, is that it mixes the metric and the gerb degrees of freedom. So there is no way to higher geometrize it. Well, but if you cannot change, if you cannot change the nature of the symmetry, change the nature of the model in which you see it. And there come Hughes and Polchinski. So what Hughes and Polchinski did, or so they say, because I cannot really find it in their paper, but so they say, is they proposed the following. Choose an algebraic model for the, for the body of the vacuum. So a P plus one dimensional subspace in, the, in T0, okay? 
good. Now, this selects a sub-algebra in H, which, stab which just add stabilizes this, 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 this subspace. Uh, and this comes from a subgroup, which will be the isotropy group of the vacuum. Well, since we want to build the sigma model, you know by now that we want to assume reductivity. Happily, in all models known, uh, reductivity obtains. So we assume reductivity of this new uh, splitting into HVAC and the rest. Okay, then we have a technical assumption of unimodularity of the action of HVAC on the vacuum, but that's sort of technical, I don't want to go there. And then what we should do, we, we should replace G mod H as the target space by G mod HVAC. And of course, this will be modeled in, 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 in G by local sections. Then we have our old chi. It descends to, to G mod, mod HVAC because it descended to G mod H. And then we add the volume on the vacuum. Just the volume form on T0. It, you might think that it's a drastic move to select where the volume sits in the supermanifold, but remember that in the, by the end of the day, we descend to G mod H. And if you act from the right by H, say you selected theta zero, theta one through theta P, when you act from the right, these are add tensors, so they get rotated. So it's no drastic move downstairs. And now we have a new background in which you will have noted there is no metric. We are getting a purely topological field theory with as yet no relation to the, to the previous one. <coughs> So, here's the hughes polchinski model. We just take it to be defined by this P plus 2 cocycle, which is the old P plus 2 cocycle plus the exterior derivative of the volume form. Well, <clears throat> it's purely topological. In fact, it's reducible to a point, which is even cooler. And now comes the duality statement. So, the duality statement is the following. Sort of never mind this technical, uh, technical uh, assumption, which is sort of can be relaxed. But if I now have a, a metric on T0, such that this the, the T0 splits uh, ad H invariantly and orthogonally into the vacuum and the, and the complement, then the two models are equivalent. As long as in the hughes polchinski model, we restrict to those field configurations whose tangents live in a certain superdistribution in G, namely the one defined by these equations, which are the so-called inverse Higgs constraints. But first of all, these are geometric constraints. Second of all, these are actually Euler-Lagrange equations of the hughes polchinski model. So nothing strange. There is no external information uh, put into, into our analysis. And now I'm slowly settling for the for the, uh, making it for, 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 the, for, the, for the shore here. The importance of this dual field theory is that it's topological, and in it, everything inside geometrizes. So the field equations are just a, define a super distribution in G, such that the tangents of the embeddings should live in this super distribution. And now you may ask, uh, so, aha, uh -huh. and then you see, I wanted to impose, I wanted to freeze out the unwanted fermions. I can just do it by insisting that the, some of the Euler-Lagrange equations of this model are such that they actually select uh, a subspace in, uh, in, the, in the odd, in the odd uh, component of the Lie superalgebra, which is precisely the subspace that corresponds to T0 vac, which is where the vacuum was, was, was localized. And then, I can ask about geometric consistency of the vacuum. Since the vacuum is, is modeled by a superdistribution, the consistency means, well, I want a, a, a sub-supermanifold. I want a vacuum submanifold in my, in, my, in my target space, but that means that the superdistribution should be involutive. And the superdistribution has an algebraic model, so this means that a certain Lie superalgebra should sit in the original Lie superalgebra of, of, of symmetries, and then, that's the kappa symmetry that I want to finish with. And then you see, I look at this correspondence superdistribution, restrict my fields to, to live in this correspondence superdistribution, and there I see the emergence of an, an enhancement of gauge symmetry. Well, there is an obvious thing. HVAC gets enhanced by D. 
well, the theory is dual to, to something which has H as a gauge symmetry, so not surprisingly. But then I also have, well, I have a non-generic part, and the generic part is an odd superdistribution, which is a gauge symmetry. Then I'm starting to look at its weak derived flag, because if it's to be a, 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 a gauge symmetry, I should start taking supercommutators, because it, I, I should get some orbits of this gauge symmetry. As I take the weak derived flag, I get immediately kicked out of, of the symmetry distribution. So I have to restrict further, and I look at the vacuum superdistribution, which I assume integrable. And then it turns out that kappa, that, sorry, this part, bracket generates the vacuum, which is what I meant by reducibility of this topological field theory to a point. Its flows envelop the vacuum. And hence, I called this, this thing the square root of the, of the vacuum. It has this model superalgebra, and now I may request the existence of an equivariant structure. And that I will do uh, on the last slide. So I have a gerb and no more. I have the original gerb. I have a trivial gerb associated with a volume form. I tensor the two together. And now I put it on those sections modeling G mod HVAC, restrict to the vacuum manifold, and there, since I have just discovered uh, a gauge symmetry of the vacuum, I want an equivariant structure. But before I start looking for it, let me just make a leap of faith. If this gauge symmetry actually generates the vacuum by its flows, then, and putting an equivariant structure on the gerb means that I'm descending the gerb to the orbit space, then this gerb should be equivariantly isomorphic to a gerb on the orbit space, but the, gerb, but the orbit space is a point. So what should the gerb be isomorphic with? There's only one gerb uh, over a point, the trivial flat gerb. And so I postulated earlier this year that this is what happens, what qualifies kappa symmetry. What is this kappa symmetry? Is the super, super distribution that bracket generates the vacuum on which, and that's the higher geometric picture, the extended gerb trivializes. I checked it for super Minkowski. Yeah, it does. So it doesn't, a priori, it wouldn't have to trivialize. I, I would just need the equivariant structure. I have more. I have a trivialization of the gerb. And now I have a super algebraic description of, of vacua in super sigma models, because these are just certain sub-super algebras, uh, uh, which sort of, well, extensions, so Murray diagrams in the category of Lee super, Lee, uh, super algebras, which are over the Lee super algebra embedding of the vacuum Lee super algebra in the original supersymmetry Lee super algebra. And I end here. Thank you very much. I'm terribly so Well, I'm not. I'm sorry for, 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 for going over time. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to have finished without conclusions, maybe, but uh, I'll just put the, the conclusions for you to enjoy, uh, maybe even um, more than the fact that it's ended. Thank you very much for your, for your, for your uh, patience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Well, oh, thank you very much. Other questions? Thanks. I, I couldn't follow quite all the details in the last few slides. Mm -hmm. uh, when you first said that it's reducible to the point, yeah. I thought that this was your way of saying extendable to the point. Yeah, I, I was sort of playing with the words because I, I would have to have a working knowledge of what you just said in order to, to, to take off the, 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 the inverted commas. But the point is, you see, that the whole, the whole information, in a sense, and quantum mechanically, I mean the gerb, is in a point, because the whole point can be generated through this kappa symmetry, through the flows of this kappa symmetry superdistribution. Uh, uh, the, the whole vacuum can be generated from a point. And this actually gets, has a high geometric uh, emanation, namely the gerb, uh, trivializes to, to the gerb over a point. So uh, that, that's my... That's what I meant by it. Of course, sort of, yeah. So how naive is it to expect that it's really fully extendable because um, the bulk theory is described or emanates from a point which seems very fully dualizable? 
Well, uh, I cannot I cannot comment technically beyond what I sort of I finished the, the computation for the for the super Minkowski and Jerp only last week. So uh, I, I think uh, it's it's a valid question, but I have nothing to, uh, to 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 add to what I what I just said. Sorry. Yes. <coughs> hey, thank you. Is there maybe one quick online question? Uh, I got one. Um, may I? Sure, go ahead. Yes, uh, so uh, throughout the story, you, well, so you, you, uh, you mentioned two descriptions of uh, the supergroups. Uh, so one is the usual uh, you know, sheaf theoretic one, which is not very convenient when you have a group structure, obviously, and the other is this uh, description using a Harish Chandra pair. Uh, but there is a third one, uh, which is due to Schwartz and Molotkov from late 70s and early 80s, uh, which is basically a functor and super points, right? Well, a pre sheaf on the category of lambda points or super points uh, with values in this case in Lee groups. So uh, you end up basically representing a Lee super group as, an, you know, a, as a diagram of, you know, honest to God Lee groups. Uh, so could that be something that, you know, that, that would be convenient, you know, to deal with in this setting, you think? Well, uh, since I'm not familiar with, with, with this definition, uh, I can only well, thank you for the suggestion to look at it, but uh, I, I, uh, uh, I don't see, yeah, well, the, you see, the problem is that I, I don't see how this could relate to the end, uh, end uh, to, to the terminal part of my talk, because there is, strictly speaking, no Lee supergroup structure on the vacuum. It's a torsor, if anything. But there is no Lee supergroup structure on the vacuum. In, so in particular, the diagrams, Murray diagrams that I wrote, were kind of cheap because they were diagrams no longer in the Lee supergroup category. And I really wanted to pass to the tangent where I have Lee super algebras to get a supersymmetric statement about the reduction, uh, about the trivialization of the gerb. But uh, so Lee supergroups won't help here the way I see it. Uh, in this terminal part of my of my story, mm, but still, I'm I'm not excluding the the, the possibility that sort of shifting the par paradigm altogether would would uh, help as it helped by going from the original Nambugoto formulation to the topological purely topological hughes polchinski formulation. So thanks for the for the suggestion. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.